But now that it's powered down, Erratic is leeching way less health. Hey, 69 damage. Nice. Welcome back, everybody. Welcome back. It's viewer game night after Monster of the Week 2. If you want to find out what happened there, check out the video. But we have a whole bunch of viewer games to look at tonight. And we also have some seasonal packs. And it seems like Chad has already been pretty lively, very excited about what they opened. But let me know down in the comments what you opened. Now, before we actually get into you know, what we're actually here for. I, of course, have to let everybody know that I am part of the content affiliate program. That means that the Phobies team does give me coffee for producing Phobies content. Just want to give people the background and the scope and all that fun stuff before we get into everything. But get into it, we shall. Let's go. What's going on, chat? How's everybody doing out there? Uh, Alistor cards, nice. Wait, so is Alistor not the new Ultra Rare? I thought you had that for a while, DT. Blooding Tron, Irk, what's good? Steven, you got a 3k tears pack and you got level 17 jar. That's pretty sweet. Inoculus, yeah, Inoculus. Inoculus is kind of a big deal. I've heard some good things. I've heard some things, chap. Need to close the, the 70,000 tabs that I have open. We're trying to get a lot of stuff done in not a whole lot of time, chat. Um... It just didn't, there's not enough hours in the day. Not enough hours in the day. But uh, as we get loaded up for viewer games, I of course have to let people know that we are coming up on Fright Night. And it looks like <sighs> Trigger Fire, in case you can you can kind of see this above me, that means Trigger Fire is not working. So Channel Point Redemptions are busted momentarily. You've had Alistor for quite a while now, but I can't get cards weighed in mind on levels. Yeah, Alistor definitely seems like a phobie that needs levels. Like, if you're missing it, that seems problematic, right? <laughs> it seems like it could be an issue. It could be an issue. But uh, yeah, let's get into things. Let's take a look at some games. Let's see what excitement people have for us. New phobie is Tick. Oh no, not like this. <laughs> Not like this. Yeah, that's, uh, I forgot that's an ultra rare. Ouch town. Forgot that's an ultra. All right, chat, just to get rid of the annoying bar at the top, I am going to turn off the notifications part of the stream. So don't redeem channel point stuff for now. Um, this happens periodically where trigger fire just has a bad connection. It, it usually fixes itself, but there's no way I can force it. Well, I could try this. Hold on. I was just trying to refresh it to see if we can get it to work, but this happens periodically. Maybe it's now for maintenance or something. I'm not sure, but let's see what Potenzi has got on deck. Can't wait to not use an Oculus for six months until it's leveled up. Yeah. Yeah. We've talked about that a lot. It's It just sucks. It's a factor of the way the game works. Uh, this game definitely fell off from the 28th. Yeah, this game is is toast. This is supposed to be versus Lydian or Lydian. And it's from the end of October. Let me just double check. Yeah, it's not here. So we're going to take a look at this one. First game of the night is Potenzia. Unfortunately, one of Potenzia's other games that was submitted croaked it just kind of fell off their profile it happens sometimes we're jumping into a different one breaking news erratic too angry to die apparently erratic is the hulk here on mount blight we'll see now potenzia has submitted oh man there's even more further down <laughs> there's like 35 potenzia games in the queue we're going to be jumping around a little bit as we usually do but we'll get into this one fairly standard opener fairly standard uh we did have this for the last Fright Night. I'm pretty sure that Mount Blight was in there. Fairly certain that it was. Notably, an early Jackalope. We were debating about Jackalopes last night in relation to whether they are better or worse than Rusty. Uh, I stand as Rusty is the undisputed, unequivocal uncompromising, unchallengeable worst phobie in the game. 
but I know other people feel otherwise. I get a, I'm going to keep adjusting the mic, chat. It, it's kind of being weird. Sorry for the extra noise. Your jar on stim that boosts damage by 340 makes your jar deal 666 damage. How appropriate. <laughs> so, I'm not going to lie. This is not a Hydra map to me. I know we've seen Hydra. I feel like we saw Hydra in, um, in Fright Night as well, but that's just... That's brutal. You just one-shot the, uh, the jackalope and eat it with tickles. Like, okay. <laughs> Got bad news for you, bad guy. Now, bad guy did have a fairly significant panic point advantage, but it ain't going to last all that long, chap. It ain't going to last all that long. There is Erratic, but I imagine, I imagine that's not the one that our hero was talking about here. Going for the takedown, it looks like, on this cassowary definitely makes sense. I mean, these two will probably pay with their life between a combination of these and anything coming out of the vault. Quick kill on the cat there. I don't know what this gin sting is doing. All right. That's fine. You know, I don't really like Repeller. I've talked about it on many occasions, but this is a map where I don't hate Repeller. Uh, there are very few. i oh, getting a ping in Discord. Friend requests. <laughs> uh, I gotta do some work for Fright Night because people can't follow directions. <laughs> Which I know I complain about a lot, but it, it just... It bothers me. It irks me, one might say. No relation to... To irk. So we're stabilizing the panic points a bit, but our hero, of course, has taken a, a huge amount, well, not a huge amount of damage, but a significant amount of damage. Flipping the panic points, finally adding a spider to the mix, which is important because if this erratic decides to get too nosy, yoink, and then it gets annihilated. New maps at least encourage the use of pushers. Which map in particular? Or are you just saying because of the disease tiles, which I guess would specify certain maps? Um, I think any abyss map or... it the disease tiles to a degree. The thing is, is that the disease and poison tiles, more so the disease because poison is, you know, poison's terrible. I, th okay, so here's a digression from this. I personally feel that the poison tiles could have been made significantly more aggressive simply because healers exist. Like, you can almost ignore, the, yes, the poison is perpetual, but like, you could just eat the poison on a number of phobies and just go, well, this guy's probably going to die anyway. It's not going to change a break point where, like, it gets one less attack or one less action most of the time because of the poison. So it's just mostly irrelevant. The disease, I get why they were cautious about it because it's a permanent thing. But at the same time, you could have also been aggressive about it and be like, yeah, deal with it. Like, it's on the board. It doesn't move. It doesn't chase you. That's your problem. I don't know if that world's better. I haven't really thought about it. But in any case, we get a Hevo, and of course, our heroes erratic finally came out. And chat, how about them bronies? How about them bronies? Well, brony, singular. Only one on the board right now. This is kind of like, well, Shockwave isn't really like brony. I got this really cheap, chat. There's a reason why it was very cheap. Mostly because it annoys me that it has no knees. Like, there are no knee joints in this. We can talk about this later if people care. I do really like this figure. It looks awesome. But the lack of knee joints is going to drive me insane. The hollowness in the forearms and uh, the calves also bothers me. But not as much as the lack of knees. Brony. Powering down... A significant portion of bad guys team as I'm busy talking about transformers and that allows Hydra to just get up in the mix and of course the threat here due to the spider yoink and now the rest of the team now bad guy could one two three four no they can't even claim this panic point like they can push pretty aggressively up in the north but they can't actually take anything as you can tell Roni versus Gonzo yep 
the classic clash of the titans. Brony is definitely a phobia that needs more attention. And it looks like we're going to see a dead Gonzo. I have to imagine this is a dead Gonzo. We even get a panic point flip thanks to the Jin Sting. Now, there will be some splash damage because of Erratic, but bad guy is left with precisely one key. Not a whole lot of threats that can come out of the vault after this sort of play. So you're relying on the damage here from Erratic and the Jar, although you can get a Spider Pull. There's a fair amount of damage that can go down onto this Hematic Jin Sting. But I'm not sure that, well, the one key can pop out. It might die. It's not impossible. Mm, yeah, that's probably dead. Oh, no, bad guy. 17 health has to invest the, the snowball. Well, you can't snowball. Yes, you can. You can fireball. Fireball was up because it hasn't done anything in several turns. Although I guess the... No, the Jin Sting was down because it, it's still bronied. I was going to say there's a Jin Sting attack available, but there's not. And all of a sudden there's a Hydra on your heart. Now, because you can't occupy the vault space, the Erratic doesn't move. And there is the potential for big ol' splash damage here. But our hero is just kind of being annoying with the brony positioning. This means that you can't necessarily collapse anything further south without having to rearrange everything. And the Hevo on its own, even with the Erratic Supplement, is not going to be enough damage to kill the Erratic. I'm not even sure they can get the, the Hydra. Bad guy forced into reclaiming some of these points. Evening them out, in fact. I doubt we're going to see another Brony activation. I mean, this thing's almost dead, but... The cooldown, never mind, it is dead. So we're certainly not going to see another Brony activation. I didn't think Gajorgio had it in him. Oh no, the Hydra actually lived, chat. Oof. Electing to go for the Hevo, I think that's correct. You just don't have enough damage here to actually kill the heart, given what's available here. Down goes Hevo. However... Erratic's still alive. Their Erratic's still alive, that is. Which means that clearly the Hydra's toast. We're going to get a cooked repeller back here. I really like Mount Blight. I know I've talked about it before, but this map, I think, allows for a lot of unique stuff. I think this would be a good, like, neutral map for tournaments. I don't know how people would feel about that, but say I created my own map pool. I think Mount Blight would be like, if I let one, if it was best of three, one player pick one map, another player pick another map, and then the neutral game would be on Mount Blight. I don't know if that's reasonable or not. We're going to get a yoink here. Yoink onto the lava, allows the splash into the jar. We kind of saw this coming. I'm a little surprised Bad Guy allowed this to happen. But they might have been... They, I don't know if they would have been panicking or overconfident at this stage, to be honest. You've been playing Warcraft Rumble. It's a great mobile game. I've been playing it a lot, too. I've been talking about it in Discord. Um, I actually do enjoy that game. I, I played Clash Royale, which is clearly modeled after. Uh, I think there's a number of improvements on it, but it's interesting that it, uh, like, there's a number of interesting factors. I'll leave it at that. We can talk about it later. Erratic annihilates its mirror universe counterpart. We got sidetracked by a lot of things this game, chat. But our hero clearly unable to chase the snowball, but panic points just because of this cap are only even. And there's clearly no way for bad guy to actually kill this erratic. Like, it's just not going to happen. I bought the Wind Rider pack, so I have a rare tier hero. I have I put two bucks into the game because I, I wanted Gargoyle. It was a three pack of Gargoyle, 
Abomination and Meat Wagon. And Gargoyle is in like every list, which I didn't know at the time. I just wanted it because it was undead. <laughs> yep. Nothing bad guy can do. We're watching the, the slow, suffocating death of Erratic just zapping you into oblivion. I mean, this actually... This came pretty close. This came pretty close. Well played, Potenzia. Well played. Yeah, Erratic... Eh. I mean, I get why the notes were talking about Erratic too angry to die, but like... I think there were a number of other parts, and obviously the Brony hit was great. I think the Brony follow-up was great as well. Like, being very aggressive behind the Brony push definitely made sense. So, GG. But yeah, I have been enjoying Warcraft Rumble. I was debating setting up a clan. But I don't know... Like, I will be playing it. But I don't know how much I'm going to... Like, like am I going to get super invested into this? Uh, it's one of the few mobile games that I don't actually mind playing. Game 2, Shinra, Shinrax, Lord Shinrax. The memes continue. <laughs> but Shinra here is our hero on Locker Room Funk. Jeeves and Attractor Gaming, note. The game was over at turn 28, but I decided to get back at him. Wait, what? Oh, I'm reading the, the wrong. They had two games submitted back to back. Um, clutch Erratic. <laughs> clutch Erratic. I didn't know about that, Steven. I'll have to look that up. I mean, I usually just Google it, to be perfectly honest. I usually just Google the list, and then it's like, all right, here's a, a list to at least get started kind of thing, so I have a clue of what to try and build towards. So Shinra with a rather unique build. Notably, neither player went with Cowbell. I don't know. People really seem... I I used to... I don't know that I ever really liked Bachelor, but I feel like I've lost respect for it as time has gone on, as... Unicorn notably has skyrocketed in usage since the game initially released. And the reason for that is Bachelor dies one for one on level to Unicorn Traps. So I really shy away from Bachelor until it's like late in the game or I know that there aren't going to be traps or whatever. But in either case, bad guy banked up for Oopsie Baby. Pretty notable. I actually lost the game to Oopsie Baby yesterday. I do really like Oopsie Baby. I think it's a very powerful force, something to, that you have to respect. Uh, whereas Shinra here is dropping a tractor. Everyone's favorite. I always use electric half of the one key on this map for obvious reasons. I think that's fair. I think that's a fair way to go about it. This is well done. Well played. You get the takedown here. You do get a pseudo body block with the oopsie baby. But there is a trap here. Shocker. So that means the cat's going to die. But speaking of electric cat, this can get in and possibly connect for some significant damage on the oopsie baby. Certainly not fatal by any means, but it's a tanky three ranger. I like it. I don't know if I would call oopsie baby tanky. It is tankier, like deceptively tanky, simply because... Well, you can power stuff down. But notably, bad guy didn't power down here. Level 14 oopsie baby, by the way. I kind of prefer oopsie over attractor purely because I don't have to babysit baby. Ironic, I know. <laughs> uh, attractor is so fragile. It is, but I mean, obviously attractor can't be tanky. I don't think I I would say I prefer <laughs> Oopsie Baby over a tractor. On a small map like this, it's clearly difficult to set both of them up. That's 13 keys. On a larger map, I could definitely see both showing up on the same team. It's definitely a thing. If you click on the mini, you will see the most used talents, aka the best, Thanatos, the life steal. I have everything besides Dragon. I haven't even unlocked talent. I don't even know how. I unlocked one when it explained it. But I accidentally pressed the button too quick, so I don't know how to do it. I think it's when you increase in rarity, like common to uncommon, uncommon to rare. But that would only would be uncommon to, or common to uncommon, and then uncommon to rare is only two, and there's three. So I don't know. I assume you can go to epic then. I don't know. I'm talking about Warcraft Rumble for people that are confused. Yeah, I use Attract more. I just like Oopsie more. Well, that's fair. Like, you're allowed to like it more. You're allowed to like it more. 
Uh, presumably this doesn't just die and clearly a tractor coming in, speaking of the fragility, if it comes in, it's probably going to get annihilated. Maybe not. We are going to get the takedown on the jar here. The thing is, with 11 keys remaining for both players, it's going to be very challenging for either player to really represent. Like, well, let me rephrase this. It's going to be challenging for either player to push the other one out entirely because there's so much available as a potential response. And this is also, we were talking about this in the last game. These tiles just don't feel threatening. Like, it doesn't matter. Not, well, it's not that it's completely irrelevant. Clearly, it's free damage on this uh, Quagmire forever, unless it's healed off. But at the same time, it's kind of like, who cares? I mean, A, it heals on its own, but it's also like a level one cowbell hit a turn. That adds up. That certainly adds up, but it's not like an extreme amount of damage. So bad guy invests their keys in Hevo 2.0 and Inoculus. What is bad guy smoking? Mm, don't know. But Erratic is the final phobie once again. Different players, seemingly the same strategy. Panic point advantage is in favor of bad guy, though. So our hero is going to have to make something happen. They, now, they do have the opportunity to set up a Gonzo and or a tractor play. And that's really what bad guy needs to play around. Just don't get a tractor. Don't get a tractor. No. No. Don't get a tractor. Don't. You don't want to get hit by a tractor. If you get hit by a tractor, that's bad. This kind of looks cool, though. The laser beam here. It's opposite day for bad guy. Which talent did you pick for your freebie? I don't remember. I'd have to look it up, Steven. Maybe I should start a, a Rumble channel in Discord. I don't know how many other people are playing it. I'm debating. I have to get an adapter for uh, my wife's iPad, and I could record gameplay from there. Yeah, like, seriously, why did this happen? So here's the big question. Where does Shinra put the erratic? And this seems fair. So, like, bad guy could push, but if you push, you have three mechs that are going to walk into Erratic. I don't think they can kill the... Actually, they might be able to kill the Quagmire right now. The bull could have been better? Possibly. Okay, so the Quagmire lives, but the Attractor dies. Raptor is pretty good. The only player I've seen getting away with skipping turn one for six or seven keys as a first phobie in some of all fears three. Yeah, Raptor is a pretty solid player. I've definitely seen Raptor around before, we'll say. So now the question is, can Raptor play keep away for long enough? Also playing the dungeon mode is a must for progression. Yeah, it does seem to be the, that case. Power down onto the Erratic, which is significant. Like, the poison, again, will add up, but now that it's powered down, Erratic is leeching way less health. Hey, 69 damage. Nice. <laughs> I think we found our intro clip. That's still, like... <laughs> that's still an enormous amount of damage because of electrical. Like, oh, that's hilarious. I know it can't be allowed to... It would probably be too powerful if it powered down electrical damage too. But it's comical that it's like, Hey, I powered down your erratic. You can't hurt me. Guess again, mother... <laughs> like... So bad guy recognizing that they now have to play keep away. It's playing keep away. They're getting the hell out of dodge. Down on panic points... They're about the same on hard health. But realistically, now bad guy's in a terrible spot. You have to wait for the boop to come back, and I don't even know if that's enough. I don't even know if that's enough.
I was about to say they're they're just going to be kind of dancing around each other until the end of the game, but it's turn 30 of 31, so guess what happens. Bad guy doing the honorable thing, walking their mechs into the meat grinder that is erratic, who is now no longer powered down. Get cooked. GG. Well played. Yeah, I don't know about the poison disease tiles. Like, two erratic MVP games in a row? True. This really did feel like... I... And correct me if you feel otherwise, chat. I'm open to alternative viewpoints on this. This was bad guy's game to lose, and they kind of just allowed the attractor pull to happen, and that completely flipped the game. Now, you could argue that eventually that attractor would inch its way up, but I feel like bad guy could have positioned differently and either then had an opportunity to collapse preemptively onto the attractor and snipe it, obviously not necessarily on the turn where pole or whatever, but like you you maneuver around, you move around, you had the panic point advantage. Shinra had to come to you. And it was just over-aggressive positioning. And the game was over. GG. Like I said, I'm, I'm always open to alternative viewpoints on this. So if you think what I'm saying is not accurate or not correct or not appropriate chat, feel free to tell me. But, like, I just don't see how it really felt like that was Raptors' game to lose. Which, I mean, if you make a mistake and your opponent capitalizes on it, that's how you win and lose Phobies games. But didn't have to be this way. But, yeah, Steven, I am uh, I am enjoying Rumble. I haven't gotten to play it in the last few days, really. Um but I have been considering if I buy the adapter cable so that, because I have a capture card. I've used it to stream, say, uh, Unite 4. And I, would, I wouldn't I would have a problem like recording gameplay videos. I don't know if I'd stream from it. I'd have to play around with it and like see how it works. Um, I may like record it and then do commentary over the gameplay sort of thing. But I'm considering doing that because I have been enjoying that game enough and it's probably going to do well. It seems like it's doing well. So it might be something to like try and get in towards the early end of, although I'm already behind because people have been playing since like January. Also, being in a clan, you can you can win Rider for free, but at a lower rarity. Oh, you mean Sylvanas when you're saying win Rider? Is Sylvanas Wind Runner? Is that what you mean? Because I know she was part of the, the uh, like guild promotion things. It's better to buy the higher rarity stuff in the shop than the stars for the most part. Yeah, I'm not... I mean, I've burned an enormous amount of gold on frivolous stuff in-game. All free-to-play stuff, other than the, the literal $2 that I put in so far. So we'll see. But yeah, I've been enjoying that game. And I would definitely be interested in potentially producing content for it if people are interested. I don't know how many people actually give a damn. I don't want to like take on another game that is going to have... YouTube views that are like in the dozens. I need hundreds or thousands of views, preferably hundreds of thousands of views, but we're not even close to that yet. <laughs> but anyway. All right, chat game three Dino Nuggy. It's never not going to make me laugh. And I know we say this probably every time Dino Nuggy is the game <laughs> replay we're looking at. By the way, we're on, uh, what's this new map called, Chad? Help me out. But every time that dinos like birds are dinosaurs, and then we make dino nuggets out of the current dinosaurs to make them look like the old dinosaurs, and, like, it's just, it's funny to me. It's just funny. It's kind of like the post on the Phobies Reddit that somebody, <laughs> my wife was, very upset with me about this because <laughs> she's like, this is stupid. Somebody had posted a or made a thread called losing streaks, but they misspelled it and it was losing stakes. And they're like, has anybody, <laughs> I'm paraphrasing, they said something to the effect of like, has anybody ever been on a, a, like multiple losing streaks back to back to back? And like, how terrible is it? And I said, well, actually, I personally prefer or the, you know, long, long streaks. 
and it came out, they typoed it as long stakes. And they said, have you ever been on long losing streaks in the post, but said stakes in the title? And I said, nah, I personally prefer fillets. And I thought it was hilarious. And my wife got really upset. She's like, that's awful. It's awful and you should feel awful. <laughs> next week is Undead. The next week after that is Beast by Checking the Dungeon. Yes. I don't know what it is right now because it was it was uh, Horde last week. I thought it was supposed to be Undead this week. But anyway, Dino Nuggies, stakes, and other digressions aside, this game went to the wire and I was extremely worried I was going to lose. But I agree with chat. This is a bold move. Uh, Contortio into Alligator because, okay. Got him, I guess. I, I don't know. We're doing things now, chat. Things are happening. We do get what I assume will become a fairly standard opener. The losing streak ends now. Yeah, no. Don't 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 do that. <laughs> uh our hero here is absolutely feels like a way stronger opener. Like, are we down by a bunch of levels or something? Level eight, level nine. No, we're about the same level. You know, like, some variance in there, but pretty close. Um, this feels way better. Now, admittedly, bad guy, correct positioning here. Uh, doesn't allow the gator to be at risk. But our hero is going to be able to claim this top point. There's an argument, even in all honesty, to yoink the uh, contortio and kill it. If you can. I don't know. Is there enough damage? 310... You might be able to kill this with a jar. It depends on how... I don't remember how much jar does around this level. But, like, yoinking the Contortio here forces your opponent to have to run around with the Gator to do things instead of just having that extra game piece on the board to do stuff, whatever that stuff is. So, like, here, the Gator claimed this point and they got this one. If you killed the Contortio, there was no threat to your spider. It would have been activated again, although right now you can just kill something. What are you going to take? All right. I don't think you can get the erratic here. I think the erratic ends up here. So obviously you take what you can get. But now you're, you've are you traded your spider for the alligator. Certainly a key positive trade, but maybe not sufficient. That is not at all what I would have done there. So putting this here obviously you can get double hit they could yoink this instead they should kill the spider but they could get the stairmaster if they want if you had it here like i don't know like you're going to take free damage here for no reason in fact it might be dead probably not though like i said spider for gator this is almost dead, and it didn't need to be this way. Cyclops coming in. So yeah, clearly you pick this off. Get the hell out of dodge. Oh, I really thought we were going to see a block here for a second. But cooldown is not back. This felt unnecessary to break. I'm curious what Dino Nuggy has in mind. But this didn't feel like it had to be broken. You broke the first one early on, and then it might have been better to have this available. This, uh, yeah, this this is just cassowary for freezies. Like you might as might as well just have stayed or tried to run. This is probably just unfamiliarity with the conveyor tiles. Like, all right, you got me. It happens. So donating a free cassowary there. And that's a noxious, a pretty aggressively positioned noxious, but a noxious nonetheless. And our hero's in a really uncomfortable spot here. They're down a yoink. That Stairmaster's 100% dead. Should be. Actually, the Stairmaster's probably going to live because you can't walk erratic into this. You do get the mech follow-up to fight the Noxious, of course, a potential liability into Erratic, and we've already seen a number of Erratic games that did very well. This is... sure. I mean, I get it.
Really? Okay, this dies. I was gonna say, does this... If the Gravedigger lived, I would have been baffled, but... That's in a parallel universe that is not this one. That is a bold move, Cotton. Oh, that is a bold move. This was unnecessary. Yes, it's a lot of damage, but I I guess it's fine. I guess it's fine. I don't like the idea of muffining a quagmire unless you absolutely have to, and I don't know that you absolutely had to there. I presume this Hevo is dead. It's gotta be. They still have Jar. Yeah, Dino's our hero in this one. Jar. Yep. There are some really strange exchanges here, but we are, you know, you could tell by level 8, level 9 phobies, we're not talking super high stress level here. So, uh, it's going to be a conglomeration of both lower experience as well as lower collection breath. Like, you just don't have as many phobies as you would otherwise. Clinico, huh? Into Moly Bully. And Spud. So, Panic Point Advantage is still... By the way, Panic Point Advantage has been in our hero's favor for a while now. It's probably 45% of hard health left. This is still a dead... Um, Inoculus, isn't it? Does bad guy not go after this? Okay, they do come after it. Oh, that's not enough. That is clutch. That is clutch. That, if this Inoculus dies, the game is just over, right? But since it lives... Ooh, we get Moly Bully sneaking off to the north. This is interesting. I mean, the forces down here, if bad guy stays, are just going to get routed, right? Yeah, the actual major players are dead. I mean, Spud is still alive, but... It doesn't really matter. Spud isn't that important. This is a scrappy game, chat. There was an argument maybe to actually leave the Clinico here to kill the... Oh, um... uh, never mind. You couldn't kill this anyway. Oh, excuse me. Never mind. Never mind. You were never going to kill it. All right. So this frees up. Oh, going for the panic points. All right. So Erratic is running back on defense. And hilariously, the Clinico is just getting shoved back onto its own side. But we've talked about it. It's been a while since we've talked about it. But... Moly Bully can put out a significant amount of damage. Bad guy throwing hard. We're throwing big time. This is the second or third game we've observed on this map where something similar happened. Where it was just not a... It wasn't as aggressive of a defense as it needed to be to ensure that you could actually live as the defender, where it's like, oh, I'll get back there in time. I mean, let's be real. If you're in bad guy's position, you had, I don't remember how much health on the heart, but you had a fairly decent bank of health. You have a one, two, three, four, five, six panic point to one advantage. Granted, it was growing at the time, but, and you had a phobia advantage and you also now have erratic defending. It, I understand the logic internally of, oh, I probably have this. You know, like, they can't stop me. They can't heart rush quick enough. 
until you realize, oops, yes, they can. Because, and this was brought up in the last time that we saw this map, and a similar issue here, or a similar uh, win by our hero, that it seems like it's actually pretty challenging to defend through those chokes. Because again, like, well, they only had the erratic moving up, but like how much surface area was there to actually hit things? And since they couldn't one-shot the Clinico with the erratic, they had to sink multiple hits from things into it. That was less damage going on the Moly Bully, and they really needed everything to defend. Once you got a panic point advantage, or at least had them even, everything else should have came back. And I think they could have actually sent things back differently and been okay. Um, but either way, Dino Nuggy takes it. GG. Bean of Evil on Phasmophobia. Clobster plus Werewolf hit and run Masters. Uh, shout out to DT with the... Well, we won't spoil the game. We won't spoil the game. But oddly enough, there's a jammy fish here too. Maybe we will spoil a little bit about the game. But there's a jammy fish. Turn one jammy fish from bad guy though. What does Bean do besides Rock Lobster here? So we spent a lot of time a few weeks ago talking about this map. I don't think, I'm pretty sure, that I did not talk about the potential for a Clopster opener from Player 2. Although I do think I recall since then people talking about how... Wow, that sucks. That sucks. When you can't one-shot the drony, that just hurts. I do kind of recall people talking about... Um, like, different Player 2 responses and that they've had better success on the map since they have... Uh, since it was initially released. Ugh, excuse me. Hematic... Gin Sting, huh? Clobster is kind of better than I originally thought. It's pretty useful at trapping some phobies on big maps and general long-range threat. It is a threat, and I understand why it can't one-shot Jar, right? Like, that would not be reasonable for that phobie to one-shot Jar. However, the fact that it doesn't will forever hamper it for me. Like, it just never feels good enough. Had my snowball trap once and scope to see him with him and Droney. <laughs> Wait, where? Ooh, we get the burrow here with the aggressive push from Clopster and Cassowary with Alistor. I didn't even see the Alistor sneak out here. He's kind of blending in with the environment. Muffin to ensure the survivability of this Jin Sting. Now, bad guy, of course, can swing down to defend. They have a panic point advantage. But this is pretty aggressive from Bean here. This is a very unique strat. I like it. Yeah, this is actually pretty cool. I have to wonder. And Bean, if you're watching this after the fact, let me know. But I'm very curious. Is this your dedicated game plan on Phasmophobia? Like, do you just say, hey, I'm doing this opener. They need to figure out how to stop me. Because I think there are some maps that, I mean, Chlorophobia is a good example of this. I will turret rush until they can prove my opponent proves that they have a response. And then, of course, you adapt as the game goes on. But it's like, if you're just going to let me walk turrets across the map, I'm going to win. You have to stop me, and then we'll see how the game goes from there. So I'm curious, Bean, if this is that sort of game plan for you on Phasmophobia. It's, I know what I'm doing on this map. It's going to be to kind of bypass all the fighting, Swing in this giant, like, J shape as player two we're talking about. Although I guess you might be able to do as player one. And then push their heart. Or is this just, after all of that that I was explaining, is this more, hey, I just, it just came into being. This was the way the game went. So bad guy with one... One, two, three, four, five, six, seven phobies maxed out to one, two, three, four, five, six. Werewolf online. It's a big boy. 
It's a big boy. Clopster. Oh, by the way. Peace out, bruh. Blulian, who could have possibly seen that coming? So here's the thing. Our hero now is maxed out on phobies. They still have 10 keys left. Bad guy has seven. They have been using key master, but this has, and we talked about it last night, one of, there are multiple ways that you can leverage uh, jammy fish. And one of them is kind of like this, where you just sort of beat your opponent to the punch every turn for the middle set of turns. You know, like you on a big map, you will have six keys because of jammy fish when they have five, hypothetically. Why aren't they getting six keys because of jammy fish? I mean, they could. They did on some turns, but they, I mean, here's the problem. And this is going to follow from what I was just explaining. They don't seem to really be doing a whole hell of a lot with the jammy fish. It almost feels like, hey, I have this cool thing. Look at me. As opposed to, I have a particular strategy in mind, and I'm trying to get this value or that level of value out of it. I don't really understand the Rambolina either, like, at all. Other than it's a, a longer range phobie. And of course, boops can sometimes be useful. I don't think there's any way this dies. In which case, Bean is just going to walk it off and go stand on a... Um, a spa for a few turns. Go on a quick vacay. Rambo is a fast answer for the heart push. I I don't hate it, but I don't like it like at all. Um, it does. It didn't do anything. It's like yeah, I get down there quick, but you didn't get down there so much faster. So like, if you had a regular move phobia, it'd be one, two, three, four. Then you in assuming range, obviously. Then you move it here, and it's like, all right, you get one hit. The Rambo went one, two, three, four, five, six. And it's like, all right, I can come down here and boop. But, okay, you're not going to boop them into the pit. If you push them away, they're just going to hit and then walk away. And if they, you could swing this way and maybe boop them this way, I guess. Like, that's a hypothetical threat because you can come around this, like, with the Rambolina here, one, two, three, boop, end up on this tile, and then collapse with other things to kind of be a threat. I don't know. Because while the Rambolina, if you assume that the Rambolina put the kibosh on that particular offensive, it's now dead weight. And the question then becomes, did you have to respond that quickly? Now, that this is kind of, on the last map, we said if you don't defend hard enough, you lose. Here, it felt like there was more time. That werewolf is going to be immortal. Yep, this is the, uh, these guys are best buds. They are good friends. In fact, this could be a decent thumbnail. Maybe put Blue Lean up there. Could also just zoom out on this. Make this the thumbnail. Let's be like... <laughs> the, force, the forces are arrayed. Although Alistor is looking a little transparent down there. I'm pretty sure I've had a werewolf thumbnail before. I don't remember. The thumbnail matters so much for Phobie's videos. I mean, it does all across YouTube, but it's weird to me how much it matters. If I put, like, when I put Repeller on the thumbnail, that video did, like, hundreds of views worse than, like, Goon. Which, admittedly, Goon was a new phobia at the time as compared to when I put Repeller up, but it's kind of like, I, I don't know. By the way, this drony been there since turn one. We started from turn one. There's something about the movement animation for Werewolf that I don't like. It just doesn't seem right, and I don't know why. Get a little push-pull action, maybe? Maybe just pull? This could be a dead Werewolf. A 
I think this is a dead werewolf. Ooh, the takedown. Now, admittedly, that took an enormous amount of effort to kill a four key, by the way. And then you get this follow-up. Lul. Four keys left. One, two, three, four, five, six. No! Oh, no, bad guy. Oh, no. They're maxed out on phobies. Now, Rambolina could get super ballsy and go in here, or admittedly, they could just kill the Noxious, and then it's like, hey, I got nine keys. But you are on a clock as bad guy right now. And part of that clock is this hard health. Sixty-three forty-five. This was a map that we talked about. How? Oh, speaking of goon. Speaking of goon, this was a map that we talked about at length of how challenging it would be going second. And being here is kind of making it look trivial. By the way, this is going to be a savage slap shot. A little less savage because the uh, jammy fish just croaked, but still. Chat. Bean is going to win because of slap shot. I see people trying to spend channel points. It's broken. I'm sorry. <laughs> see the bomb from a mile away? Yeah, like, look at this! Oh, my God! <sighs> Chat. Chat. It's giving me goosebumps. Goosebumps, Chat. That was brutal. All right, now you can spend channel points again. <laughs> it's back. It's back. It fixed itself. One could say it's giving you goon bumps. Ah, 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 got him. <laughs> got him. I'll have to remember to leave that in. <laughs> Goon bumps, he says. Oh my god. Hey, Quan Davius, I see you on the list. We may not get to your game tonight, Quan Davius, just because there's a lot, but it is on the list. Assuming a, a patch doesn't break it, we'll get it next week or whenever. Um... Okay, there are two f versus Dragon. The eighth. A shorter game compared to the last few. Mexicano or Bader here. Transaction decline. No, yes, transaction decline. Second guess myself there. Cut to the chase. Well, with a short game like this, we are getting right to it. Uh, we saw a pretty brutal, probably the play of the night chat last game. Like, that was an awesome slap shot. This map is in your nightmares. I don't hate this map. This does kind of, like, we saw a number of Hydra attempts on this map. Pushing through the middle. Um, we saw some cool Fright Night games. You can definitely check those on YouTube. Uh, if you look want to look for inspiration. What was the other thing we saw on this map, chat, where it was... It, was it Hydra? No, there was something else. Somebody else submitted a game where it was like they went mass one drops into something. What was it? Getting the takedown in the north. Of course, the conveyor belt will allow for a uh, bad guy to recap one of those points. But our hero out to a pretty quick advantage. Pretty quick advantage here. Cars versus Hopeloy. Yes, that was the game. What, what was the phobie? 
that it was. Cars had something pretty unique there that I don't remember what it is. And it's going to bother me now. Kerbloom. High five. That's what it was. High five. Thank you, Honda. Thank you. Like, I could picture the game in my head, but there was just this fuzzy spot for where, like, up here, where the phobie ended up. And I'm like, what was it? What was it? This is why I have chat around. Help me remember these things. That's a Kerbloom, by the way. I don't really know what the hell is going on here. That's a muffin healing a jar. Dragon definitely feeling the pressure here. Uh, sure, I guess. Yo, that is bold. I mean... Uh, sure? Reagan, when he has to spend his muffin on Jar, not Boss, yeah. But seriously, like, is is this strategy a thing? Like, is this actually a thing, chat? Is this, is this better than... I can actually feel the vibrations in the desk from my voice, so I'm sure it's blowing out the mic, but like... If I spawn Kaboom there, Dragon's gonna cupcake that jar and kill my Kaboom. Okay, so in all seriousness, there is something to be said for the psychological play of, like, everyone knows you, Onda, as the Kaboom guy, right? Like that's that's kind of your whole shtick. Not that you are pigeonholed into that, and it's the only thing you can do, but, like, everybody knows you for that. So, going into a game, people are going to... By the way, is Tickles floating here? Tickles looks like it's not on the tile. It looks like it's, like, levitating above the tile. But anyway, like, my point is, is that because you are known for being the kaboom person, I think people are going to go into the game and be like, well, I can't get kaboomed, and try and constantly play around kaboom, kerbloom, and boom. If it comes from another player, yeah, the response should hypothetically be the same. But at the same time, it's like, you're not in the same mindset. There's a shadow bug, too, for Mini Mummy. It makes them look like they're floating. Ah, interesting. I don't know if Tickles is actually floating here, or I'm just, like, seeing something that's not there. You know what I mean? Little, uh, hallucination action. It's a dead gin sting, right? It's gotta be. It's probably a dead bow, and honestly... Okay, this is, this makes sense. Got to prevent that boom from connecting. I don't know why our hero ran with Bachelor. So, like, there's a, a reality where... Now goes Snowball. There's a reality where the damage from that this other one key matters, right? Where maybe that is the little bit of extra damage you need in order to take down the heart or whatever. Especially given that until the snowball, obviously the turn you played the bachelor, the snowball wasn't on the board, you would you were planning on trying to connect with boom. So why not have something with a higher damage output, whether it's contortio or even razor mouth? They didn't use those already, right? Never mind, they use that. Use contortio. I refuse to believe that Bachelor was the next highest damaging one key they have, like regular attack damage. I refuse to believe that's true. Jar to get the pick, triple panic point advantage once again. This is just an insane amount of pressure. Maybe I gotta level up my Kerbloom chat. <laughs> Maybe I gotta level up Kerbloom and see how this works.
Dragan had to think about it for a second and realize, oh yeah, I, I kind of need to cap this point. Kind of need to cap that point. You're under an insane amount of attack pressure. What's hilarious here is like, you could just move Jar and hit the heart if you wanted to, but obviously the goal here is clear this out, reclaim the point. I'm confused. This game ends on Dragon's turn. 257. 235. Alright, so you claim the panic point back. Oh no. Does that cost you the game? So Dragon must have surrendered at this point. Five keys left. We'll go back and look, but I'm pretty sure Bader won this game. Yeah, but... Yeah, that's true. How did that happen? Because this should have gone on to a 15th turn. So, like, this does, you can't quite see it, but it's um, 597, I think. Wait a second, why can't I, why can I click on Bader's units, but not Dragon's? So, you don't one-shot this. This does not have Fireball. So one thing that could happen, one thing that could happen is Dragon has one slot open and has five keys. This can only heal to like sub 600. Oh, you know why? Dragon had to have surrendered because they can't kill the jar and the jar can just hit the heart. The jar can do 300 damage. And they just pass turn. So, like, they can't body block out the jar. So, what they probably needed to have happen here. So, like, this is the start of Dragon's turn. I think what you have to do is you kill the Bachelor with the Murder Wing and get pulled here to, um,. Bachelor's spot. It may not matter because that, that's 600 plus 9. No, this will live. So what would happen here? No, because you can just spud. Yeah, I don't think there's any way for Dragon to stop this. You would have to have the uh, baby Snakey end up here, I think. You have to have the baby snakey end up here because the batch or the uh, murder wing is not tanky enough. I mean, I I I think it's a bug, Irk. I agree. Normally, that's how it would work. If Dragon surrendered, even if it was surrendering on the fifteenth turn, it would have shown the fifteenth, like fifteen turns instead of what we have. Wait, it actually only shows 13. So it says 13 here, but there's 14 in the game. I mean, the reality is, is that Bader wins this. And I, I'm trying to figure out if there was a way that Dragon could have... I'm confused how it says Mexicano won, because they did. There was no way for Dragon to win this. The game was over as soon as Dragon hit end turn. Because this jar moves here and, and literally ends the game. Now, as to why the UI says that, I don't understand. Like, that 
that I'm confused by because if we got a surrender, it we should have gotten a different configuration of what it showed in in the front of the replay, how many turns it was showing, stuff like that. But but uh, Bader or uh, Mexicano here absolutely had the win just because Jar was going to move to this spot. That's why I was talking about having to. Wow, what is wrong with Baby Snakey's face? It looks weird there. Um, it had to move to this spot. I think it started here. So one, two, three, four. Like it could have ended up here. The problem is, no matter what, I think like this kills this, then claims this point. Baby Snakey's here. But a single panic point advantage isn't sufficient to end the game. I don't even know if you could get a 2 to 1 panic point advantage from uh our hero's position. So I think it's possible that like baby snakey moving here instead of claiming the point is game over in Dragon's favor. I'm not sure. But either way, well played with a very unique aggressive strategy on this map. Like that was actually pretty cool to see. Chat, we've got a Karst game, and guess what? It is not against Hopeloy. I know, we all thought it was coming, but it's not. Hopeloy is not, in fact, our bad guy this time. Karst is saying, aggro set up on Eternal Monday featuring high five. Karst has been on a high five kick as of late. I know that they said they were expressly trying to force this phobie in a number of games. So if you're a high five fan, start watching Karst games. I really should... Imagine Hopeloy submit a game to be reviewed. I'd be curious. I'm waiting for it to happen. Like Hopeloy, remember when Vladimir was running around? Uh, the 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 proto Hopeloy, we'll say, uh, and a number of other people that have been in those positions as well. Um, fairly standard openers here. We'll see where Cars takes it, but I would be. I let me rephrase this. I think it might be worthwhile for me to just record Karst games where Karst is like, and not necessarily do commentary on them, but just like have, you know, if if the focus is high five and then that way we have a playlist of like, oh, well, how do I play high five on a bunch of maps? Like, what do I do? Well, here's some games for you to study because eventually they're going to fall off people's profiles. But if I archive them on YouTube, we'll have them forever. Well, as long as I keep my account. Okay, here's my level 96 Jar Cannon dominating the game. Hope you guys like it. Yep, I, I actually want that to happen. I'm not trolling. I really want Hopeloy. Hopeloy, if you're out there listening, I would be happy to look at some of your games where you're just obliterating people with levels. I think it would be funny. I think it'd be funny. I know people. some people will get pissed. Some people will be bored. But I legitimately think it will be hilarious. Now, at this point, Karst has maxed out doing the old innocuous, I don't want to say trick, but, like, get impression. Here's my Henrietta soloing all my opponent's phobies. I, I really want Hopeloy to submit a game like that. How much health would a level 96 jar happen? Well, first of all, it can't happen. It's an exaggeration. There is a level cap on phobies, but you could calculate it. You get plus 3% stats per level for every level. So, like, you could put it in a spreadsheet and figure it out. I'm not going to do that math on stream. <laughs> so, cars, to me, has a big advantage. Of course, they are able to trade out their one keys, freeing up space, and they were able to pick off their opponent's one key while still maintaining a panic point advantage. I think this is important to call out. I'm going to pause here for people that are actually trying to learn instead of listening to me bullshit. If you skip to cars game, Here's why you do these sort of things. Cars did not just get into a one key trading war, which we frequently, and by the way, this is this is actually a kind of a funny thumbnail. I might use this. Like, this is actually kind of cool. Um, you don't want to get into one key trading wars because it's really just, unless your game plan is to reduce the amount of keys, because Alien Engineer did this a lot on small maps, and then would pop out a tractor at the end of the game and go, hey, you have no more keys to respond. If it's intentional, that's fine. But a lot of people get into these one key trading wars and accomplish nothing. Instead, what Karst did is invade with two one keys, not just to get the temporary triple panic point advantage, but because their opponent only had one 
one key phobia, they're going to have to commit something else, something significant, relevant into the spots to flip the panic points back in their favor. Or they have to wait, thereby buying cars time to reinforce with something else. It gives you an actual tangible advantage by doing it this way instead of just trading them back and forth. <laughs> yeah, Dark Oculus. Yep. Bro thinks he's a tractor. <laughs> Jar would have 1,617 health and 847 damage. It's a pretty scary level 96 Jar. Although, realistically, all the relationships between the phobies end up being the same. So, like, it, it is what it is. <laughs> so we get Bachula and Cat once again going double one key, maxing out, but clearly they're not long for this world. Oh, excuse me. You got more bees? Nice, Vader. We just actually looked at your game. Level 30 jar probably has around 450 damage. Sounds about right. Bees! Bad guy being aggressive with their cassowary. GG. Nah. I mean, all right, sure. This is actually a funny play that I really like on um, on Eternal Monday. DT was one of the original progenitors of Gravedigger on this map because it allows you to break these obstacles and then get a turret in the position where Bo Mangles is. But here, as on just point out, get denied. You lock your opponent out here, triple panic point advantage, and they have to waste a turn, or in this case, more than one turn, Destroying this thing. High five versus Chuck. Heard it here first, chat. The snipe onto the... So this Gravedigger has gotten an enormous amount of value. Two obstacles destroyed. One, a huge amount of time bought. And... And it just killed that Stabby. I remember DT's old game where... He, one with a high five by killing a dimensional got pulled next to the heart to win. Yeah, I think that was the moonwalking uh, high five play. That's an old one. Yeah, they, congrats, Vader. With the hematic gin thing, it's a big deal. It's a big deal. So for anybody wondering, like, this is why the high five into Chuck. Also, what in God's name is happening to high five here? Like, my guy, are you all right? Do you need my help? Do you require assistance? You just don't. This doesn't this doesn't seem healthy. I don't know why this is so silly to me. But like, yeah, this is somebody who's about to just wipe out. This is moments before disaster. But anyway, the point I was going to make, <laughs> High Five's got that swagger. Yeah, he's doing. Connor McGregor walk. So anyway, high fives rolling up here with 35, 35, 3100 health on the heart, 3105, but representing 1300 damage per swing. And oh, by the way, panic point advantage. Who approved the supervisor of performing culinary activities? Who let him cook? Oh my God. Oh no. This has got to be panic mode for bad guy. I mean, the game is over. Like, literally, the game is over. This is the last turn. Because there's just no way to kill this. This would have been 14, 21. This is... Chat. I didn't see this before. This is over 4,100 health on this high five. That is a tanky as hell high five. Like, my guy. He's been eating his veggies. <sighs> Karst has absolutely been falling. Falling in love with high five. Winning in to ensure win again. That's weird. Win again? Something like that. Something like that. GG. <laughs> I don't know what else to say. Got him. Finnegan's that dude that does nothing in the school project but gets credit anyway. 
<laughs> You're not wrong in this scenario. All right, chat. We got probably one more game, and then I got to take a break. We got a DT game for you. We got a DT game for you. And this one, its reputation preceded it. The reputation of this DT game did, in fact, precede it. Stop. Jammer time. Probably my best showcase so far for using jammy fish against an opponent with similar levels. Curious what people think about how much of an impact it had. Just making sure there weren't other notes. So we're here with DT as our hero. Uh, DT did put on a clinic just a scant like 24 hours ago with jammy fish in Monster of the Week 2. No other notes. Better note would have been, I got moves like Jammer. <laughs> Shh, we got to save these. You can't use them all up in one shot. <laughs> I want Jammy Fish puns every time it shows up, chat. We got to make this a thing. We got to make this a thing. So yeah, I have to imagine most people are like, what do I even do? There's really not much you can do to stop said jammy fish, right? It's like, it just pops out and it, it does its thing. And in fact, it did its thing pretty quickly. No repositioning. Bring Firkin. <laughs> Yeah, send in Fergan to stop the Jammy Fish. Jammy is kind of like, I'm here, I'm helping. I mean, to be honest, Jammy Fish, it, yes, the stats on it are, say, lackluster. But it's still a body. And if it's doing other things, it's fine. The animation is cool. How much damage does Jammy actually do? It's 300 at level 1. For context, a... Uh, unbearable and a Firkin are 375. A Hevo is 350. Now, it is a two move, two range phobie, and it obviously flies, so. And it has Keymaster, so it's not like that's it, but it's not exactly the highest of people's charts on combat prowess. So, like, sucky type damage, I guess. Is Sucky 300 a level 1? This mother load is on the board because of Jammy? Yeah, I mean, that's the thing, is that Jammy... It's a... Instead of an investment now for a payoff later, it's a payoff now for an investment later, sort of. That sounds weird, but realistically, you know, you are you are fronting three keys to put it on the board, but it does let you jump ahead of the curve for a couple turns. So you have to take advantage of it while you can. Now, at this point, as Bader was pointing out, we got this. We also got the earlier... Um, so, like, turn one... The cowbell came out. That shouldn't have happened because we got snowball cowbell and jammy fish. I know I put up four fingers, but snowball cowbell and jammy fish. Then we got the grave digger turn. Jammy fish was activated. And then I think, was that when the mother load came out? I was looking at chat at the time, but like we're getting multiple uses of this jammy fish to push specific phobies to be the, the rock to their scissors. You got bad sushi from your season pack? Congrats! <laughs> That's not going to make you feel any better. I thought it was a passive. No, it's an activated ability. Oh, by the way. Akira! So the real crux of the question, as DT pointed out, which, by the way, Akira plus Motherload is going to be hilarious. Um, the crux of the question is this. And DT posed this in the notes. Was the tempo loss 
Because obviously, again, you had you could have instead put a different three key on the board. You could have put a two key and that cowbell. And then just gotten the the one key that was being provided by Jammy Fish a turn delayed. You know, like the next turn you would have got it when you get your next key allotment. This is just brutal. Bad guy, you had to have seen this coming. Look at this turn! Oh, hammer, don't do it to- Wait, you're not gonna- Hold on, what? I thought this turn was gonna go very differently. Did it? DT, are you in chat? Like, did you, like, did it not work out with Make It Rain? I guess it wouldn't have. Like, you wouldn't have had the damage. But I was assuming this was going to be an Akira pull into a Make It Rain turn. Don't have to use the ability? Yeah, but if you did use the ability, like, if the math worked out that you could use the ability and blow those two up anyway, so, like, have the mother load where this is, you would have gotten the extra splash on here, but you would have been vulnerable to, obviously, the retaliation. You probably lose mother load in the process. Is that better? I don't know. Sparky? Yeah, but the thing, kill phobies with Klopp's request, but I don't think I could have done more in that turn anyway. That's fair. Um, if you sacrifice the mother load here, the question is, like, they ha can they kill the mother load without two Sparky hits? That's probably unlikely, right? Like, they probably just don't have enough damage. Eight keys to seven keys, by the way. And if they have to have two Sparky hits, then you kill the Sparky. So you've now damaged these two by some amount, as well as killed the Sparky and possibly more because they had to stay here to sink all the damage into the Mother Load. I don't think Hevo will die if Mother Load's going in and using the ability. Now, that's a more valid reason. Yeah, if you can't... I think killing the Hevo is more valuable because then, of course, you still have the Mother Load after this whole exchange. And... It's also protected. It's not like they can just just wail on it anyway. So that's why I was curious if DT had tested it. There was some other point I was making prior to that, but I forgot what it was. So Foul did actually connect here with Akira. So wait, what was that? Jammy Fish is so cool anyway. Here's Akira. Yeah. No way I would have had keys for Akira without Jammy Fish is the thing. Well, you would have just not in the time frame that you did. And that's the thing is, and that's why we were talking about it the other night is that there are multiple different ways to leverage Jammy Fish's ability. But all of them are ultimately contingent on the idea that you are leveraging it quickly. You can't derp around and let your opponent back into the game. You have to generate an advantage and press it while you have it. By the way, we finally get the, the mother load drop, obviously. Evo 2.0. There is the potential for a nasty attractor pull here. But odds are, I don't know that it even matters. Even with the disease on Akira, it's still alive, obviously. And there's going to be a significant amount of damage that has to be sunk into the mother load to try and take it down. That was obviously just for the AoE damage. Foul going after the Hevo, trying to solo the big bot here. But yeah, I agree that in the, like this particular sequence, like summoning sequence, you weren't going to get to that Akira on the turn that you did otherwise. You'd have to completely rework how things came out. Akira's still alive? Yeah, but not for long. Not for long. But let's be real. The damage has been done. The damage has been done. And I do think that this particular setup is reasonable. 
So my question to DT or any other jammy fish havers is this. How flexible do you feel your general strategy is when you have jammy fish? Do you feel that, I mean, I have to imagine you were planning on slamming an Akira regardless, right? But do you think that you can adapt? So you put jammy fish on the board, you're probably using it on cooldown, right? Like there's there's no real disadvantage to using it. Um, at least I can't think of one. Like I, I don't see a reason. But do you feel like you have to have a very structured strategy to use jammy fish? By the way, great play here with the repositioning boop. Um, or are you able to just simply whatever seems to be best for this scenario, that's what I'm going to do. Also, by the way, as men, I know I pointed out earlier, but foul connected with Kira completely irrelevant with the disease. Completely irrelevant. Like you could make an argument. Oh, well they killed the thing. Who cares? It made precisely zero difference. But yeah, just to finish the thought, it, if you put Jammy Fish on the board, like I said, I expect you are spamming the ability on cooldown because there's really no penalty for it. Technically, I guess, until the fourth activation, you're not ahead on keys, technically, because you had to invest the three in the Jammy Fish to begin with. But... The way the economy, in-game economy, like, actually in the game, not like coffee, the in-game economy for Phobies works is it's not, it's not as simple to equate that investment. Sometimes there's a moment where I'll sacrifice Jammy Fish, even though I still have many keys left in the vault. I mean, if it's appropriate, yeah. And I imagine at this point, until people are more comfortable playing against Jammy Fish, Plays like that are going to be much more reasonable because people are like, okay, that does something weird. I'm going to kill it while I have the chance. I don't want to let them get some sort of advantage. But my, the crux of my question is this. If you put Jammy Fish on the board, can you adapt to your opponent's game plan or do you have to stick to whatever your initial rigid strategy or rigidly stick to your strategy going into the game because... It messes with the the summon cadence so much. I would imagine you can still adapt as needed. And like I said, I assumed Akira was always coming out. So it was like, I'm just going to power stuff out. And then at some point I'll get Akira. But like the mother load was rather unique. And I don't know if that was specifically because you had a mother load quest or you wanted to use mother load or you felt like it was just better because you were powering it out or what like why mother load there instead of hevo 2.0 like flip the two for example go play jammy and rent pass do it, it's really fun bullying walking phobies in that one corner panic point <laughs> when i use it on small maps i usually end up spamming 3.0 or boss because hey, i have the keys for it already and opponent still has half their total keys Still for counters, but can't catch up. Yeah, the tempo advantage is big. The tempo advantage is big. I would love to say that, hey, maybe this changes the outlook on Akira. But, like, the Jammy Fish player can just play Akira themselves. It's very interesting. It's very interesting. Like, I'm excited to, about Jammy Fish. Just the, the entire premise of it. Maybe I'll make Jammy Fish the, uh, the thumbnail. I'll have to go find something in DT's game. Rosari is back in action here on For Nassify. Different approach gaming. Trying to limit opponent's options and output instead of focusing on damage dealt. Oopsie might be good. Well... I have news for you, Rosarius. Yes, Oopsie is good. It actually gets used a fair amount. Like, uh, I think Oopsie is pretty solid. I think Oopsie is pretty solid. I think a lot of people would agree. 
I never see Ogre. I feel like it has potential. I think Ogre, Ogre's kind of garbage. Ogre, to me, is... It is possible to use it, but in most cases, you're better off just not getting into the situation where Ogre is good. I like the idea of Ogre on paper. But I just, in practice, it's just not, like, you could just not lose instead, you know what I mean? It also has the big issue of not scaling for the size of the map. Which I can understand for clarity's sake of why they did it the way they did. But I think it would have been better if they had uh, allowed it to scale where it activates with more health left on larger map or uh, more health left on the heart on larger maps but the problem there is you could possibly run into a scenario where it activates too soon because it's still a lot of health also i don't like the play here from rosarius popping the contortio on here i think you're better off either waiting for bad guy to advance and take that center point and then you cap it back or just put the one key on the board and then just wait. Especially given the, the patience model we're kind of going with based on what was being said. Ten keys left to 18. We do have a Steve's on the board. It's going to have a little bit of time in order to try and get things set up. Or is bad guy preventing the dimensional pull? I forgot to get more water chat. It's going to be desert gaming. Little Steve's trap action going out. Got a reposition thanks to the attractor. Yeah, attractor does those sort of things, unfortunately. Naturally, our hero is in the no. Don't put the traps onto the center point. Guess what? That A wall would have activated it and you would have felt very silly. Walruses, obviously the natural predator of toes. I mean, if you didn't know that by now, what are you doing? Like, this is common knowledge. The toesies. Erratic. I'm not going to lie. I'm not a huge fan of the erratic into the, Well, I guess erratic is fine. You do obviously run the risk of, oops, I stood on a trap. But you have five keys left. You have a slot open. Bad guy, if they want to, can just pop out a snowball to try and thaw it. But there is a significant amount of damage represented on our hero side that if the erratic gets caught out of position with a freeze trap, it's probably just dead. Mm, they are risking it right now. They are risking it right now. Now, as we saw in an earlier game, you can oopsie the erratic, but that does not power down the electrical damage. It deals a lot of damage once your heart is a 3k or lower. I think it does a decent amount of damage. I'd have to look at the numbers, but I, I kind of recall it doing a decent amount of damage, even if your heart hasn't met the criteria. You know, like, it's obviously not your first choice, but if you have a low collection level, you could hypothetically use it as just big dummy 7 key. Kind of. Alright, so this is super ballsy, because you obviously have the threat of the attractor yoink. Bad guy electing to go with Muffin instead of just walking the Stabby up to the healing spot. Bad guy also not willing to do the yoink here. I get it because if you do go for it, you didn't really have the rest of your team in position to capitalize on it all that much, which I think is a good observation by Rosarius that like, Given what bad guy had available, I think our hero would have come out on top blow for blow. But there is a potential for something like this where a boom could have come in and supplemented the forces and then just actually wreaked havoc. However, our hero is out of keys. 
and we get the block here. Is bad guy going to take the bait? Now is a good time for a freeze trap onto the panic point. And the power down here, 508, what level is this? This is a level 16 oopsie baby. 48 damage, but again, a lot of electrical damage. And bad guy can get a yoink here and get the big splash coming in. In fact, they might have been better off if they did this slightly differently. So as mentioned, still a decent damage output against mechs despite the power down. But not enough to actually kill the oopsie. Yeah, that's problematic for you, bad guy. However, our hero is out of keys. So not a whole lot in the reinforcement department. Is this oopsie dead anyway? Probably not. Probably not. Splash damage, I... Well, we'll find out. I don't think the splash damage can get it. Let's strap in, folks. We're only, like, halfway through. A little over. I don't know what that means, Steven. Increase it in rarity and getting a talent to give it a plus one level. Without changing the amount needed for the next level cap. What? This is an enormous amount of freeze traps. This is the Arctic right here. And bad guy has to know. Like, there's no way you don't know at this point. Now, that being said, bad guy has the advantage. Can just set up a yoink. Big chill in gaming. Got him. Get it? It works on multiple fronts. It's both the freeze traps, therefore ice, and... They're just staring at each other. They're just chill. They're just hanging out. Freeze numero uno. <clears throat> Notably, bad guy's going to be able to still... F this is kind of funny because the assumption is when you... In games like Phobies, where you can shoot through your friendly tiles the assumption is kind of like oh well my guy dodges out of the way we're in communication and my guy like just gets out of the way so i can shoot through i guess you could say well the stabby could like lean around the now frozen grave digger but it's kind of like well, clearly the grave digger can't move <laughs> oh no bad guy you're in for a bad day wait is steve's dead there's no way Steve's is dead, is it? I mean, Steve's kind of... Like, does Steve's even need to walk away? Like, this... Oh, this is the bait, chat. The bait. There's no way that bad guy doesn't come after the Steve's. Oh, baby. <laughs> the ice wall. Rosarius turning into Sub-Zero. Hakune cries in happiness. Yeah, cries in Hakune. <laughs> Womp wah. By the way, that oopsie's in range. Lul. We going after the stabby first, huh? The bold move there, Cotton. I mean, realistically, you're going to power this thing down, so, like, it's fine. I think you power down and walk away, though. Yeah. Because the splash, because of the electrical damage, it's going to leech a lot of health. Now it can't really leech safely. Although now it's on the stem.
This is still somewhat dangerous for our hero. Kind of. Bad guy has to step off the stim in order to come after the oopsie baby. And they're not going to deal enough damage here to keep themselves alive. Down goes oopsie. But erratic walking bravely into its death. Well played. Oopsie baby Steve's. I don't think we've seen that combo before. I'm sure. Well, I'm sure we've seen it, but it's not certainly not a common one. It's just one of those scenarios where I yes, the notes are talking about Oopsie Baby and it absolutely played a major role, but like your opponent lets you put seven freeze traps on the board. Something like that. Like it was not gonna end well for them. Bingus! We got Bingus. Bingus is here. Very dumb opening, but I was able to fix my mistakes and slowly pressured him. We're here on Vile Vortis. Ooh, with the werewolf opener, but from bad guy. Boo. Hiss. Why, Thunder Rocks is good? It's okay. Low level game. Level fours? Yeah, that's pretty low stress level. What's the most forgettable phobia? It's going to be difficult because you don't remember it. <laughs> That's a difficult question to answer. So, uh, yeah, Bingus, our hero, leaning into the walk the turret plan on File Vortis number 11. It's a bold move there, Cotton. We'll see how it works out for him. I still think the Thunder Rock should have a base 350 or 350 base and 350 electric. Is that equal to the overall damage it's doing right now? Probably Slammerhead? Nah. Slammerhead's a good boy. It's 2600 ELO. I'm only level 35-ish. Fair. Yeah, ELO is really... Although I don't know that it's a true ELO system in Phobies. But regardless, the rating is probably a better way to gauge things. Um, rather than stress levels. But... There's information like that that I would love to have available in the replay system. Yeah, Metabot is definitely very forgettable. Um, Dr. Dermic is probably more forgettable. I only remembered it because somebody just said Metabot, and I'm like, oh, there's another healer. Or that walking syringe guy. That's, uh, yeah, that's Dr. Dermic. Um, but there... Aside from, and I've talked about this before, having like the drop down on either side for the players for when they lose a phobie, so like you don't have to click on the vault, um, or even just like a running tally. I would love to have um, like the ratings available in game, the leagues available in the game, so we don't have to see it, like go out of the game and come back in. There are like observer tools in real time strategy games that allow for not those sort of things, but like the construction graphs and other details so that that way if you aren't looking at something you can still have the information on screen somewhere to be like oh well they're building an army while they're doing the fight over here or they're building a base while they're doing this and i think that that would be similar to having the availability for these other options where like imagine if i paused the game and then it gave me an options menu and i could check boxes to say always show hp First of all, that should always that should be available for all the parts of the game. But anyway, always show HP, show dead phobies in vertical uh, like tapestry, whatever. Um, show the rating, show the whatever. I think that would be reasonable. I think that would be cool. Reasonable may not be accurate. So anyway, a bunch of pressure going down on our hero here due to that werewolf that was being very aggressive. Actually, almost half heart health gone. I don't think probes a lot is a forgettable phobia. I think a lot of people know that one. Both because of the name, the animations, the fact that it's so difficult to acquire, etc. So I like the cat body block here. Soaking some damage. A lot of one keys out of our hero here. A lot of one keys. 13 keys available to bad guy. 9 for our hero. 
One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Our hero is actually maxed out, going up to 14 keys now. That is a Rambo Lena. Second one we've seen tonight. I have a feeling it's going to go much the way that the first one did, aka nowhere. And Crushmore. So our hero does have Crushmore. I would have expected to see this much, much earlier in the game. Because, I mean, it's a lobber. And Terraform is just bonkers on this map. Potentially, anyway. You can put in a lot of work with Terraform. Admittedly, when I do it on this map, I am often a little too loose. Or maybe a lot too loose with Crushmore. I get him killed very easily. I send Crushmore into his doom fairly frequently, so my bad, Crushmore. little boop action here from Rambolina ensures its survival for at least a turn. Hundred and fifty stress phobia should just be an instant win phobia. We already have that, it's boss. Show me the lie. <laughs> Pterodactyl, the terror of the low stress levels, definitely a significant problem if you're a lower stress level player. Honestly, I think the turrets are kind of harming our hero's entire setup just because of having to juggle them. It's not awful yet, but it doesn't feel great right now. So bad guy's setting this up to let Stabby take this bottom panic point. Still 17 keys available to them. They just don't want to invest in anything. Because they have the spots. Okay, I take it back. Smother mother. Poor Pterodactyl got overshadowed by Daisy. And what's funny is you don't really see Daisy all that often anymore either. I think Daisy is fine. I think Pterodactyl's still fine. But they absolutely don't get the play that they did previously. So we do get the Terraform here, locking out part of Bad Guy's team, but not the entire team. Notably, Smother Mother does have Burrow. But the follow-up here is Noxious. If Bad Guy wants to commit into this, they better want it because it's not going to be pretty. Now, Smother Mother doesn't have to pull any yoink action. It could just go in and actually slap the crap out of things. It can hit pretty hard. And in fact, bad guy is going to pull back. I don't know about this. Smiley? I guess... Like, I kind of get it to stop the AoE, but the problem is, and, like, Bingus hits the uh, Terraform statue here, but I don't know that that does enough. The reason being is that that Stabby can just march up to the spa. What if the edge of the map was Abyss Tiles? You know... I don't hate that idea, honestly. It obviously wouldn't work for every map because some of them are, you know, like a locker room funk. There's only a few edges that are at least based on the art. Open spaces that could hypothetically be an abyss. But there are small maps that could have abyss tiles surrounding them. Based on the art, that is. You could obviously just make them all abyss tiles anyway. That might lend a lot more value to boops because you can't just walk your team away necessarily and hide in the corner. Like, Rambolina would probably have a lot more value then because Rambolina could just dive and be like, all right, well, I annihilate your team. That may not be healthy for the game, but it would be interesting at the very least. 
Bad guy finally getting that stabby healed up and ready to go. Panic point advantage is in bad guy's favor, so we are slowly pressuring Bingus here. Still six keys available, so it, you could get a pretty decent threat, like a klepto or something, or you get several different smaller things to really threaten bad guy's team. But for now, that smother mother is representing a pretty serious threat of its own. I really don't understand the smiley. Like I said, I kind of do. But I just get the feeling it's not going to do a damn thing. Like I said, I'm pretty sure it was intended to be an anti-noxious. And I just... Whatever. It doesn't matter. Not important. Honestly, at this point, we might see another block from the Crushmore. I may or may not have done the same thing a few times. <laughs> I may have done that to a few people before. Now, admittedly, the bottom statue is kind of crumbling, but panic point advantage hero, bad guy has to commit in. Yeah, you have burrow. Yeah, you have range with Rambolina and an AOE hit and Smiley could fly over. The game is still fairly even. Bad guy has time to reposition, wait for our hero to make a mistake. Is lob heal going to be useful like this new Phobies throws a medic kit? Do we even have a ranged healer right now? I guess you could count um, Blue Lian as a ranged heal. Because, like, Clinico, Metabot, Dermic, uh, Zamboni, Leshy. I'm missing one, right? Is there one more healer? I guess you could count the AoE from Zamboni. Kind of. Like, I, I see what you're saying, but I don't... It's not quite the same. I think a lob heal could be interesting. Like, that could have value. It could have fringe value. By the way. Great Noxious hit here. Not gonna kill that. Could kill the Rambolina. It won't, but it's possible it could. And, of course, softening up the Smother Mother. The question is... Does Bingus have the setup to capitalize on this, or is Bad Guy going to have time to heal everything up? Because now, of course, the disease is on the Noxious. <sighs> so this had to have been bait, this whole setup, because allowing the Crushmore to get disease like doesn't benefit you meaningfully in any way. So the assumption here is that you collapse onto the rest of their forces and get some value out of this. What about passive AoE heal around said healer phobia if Leshy was that? It would be really good. I mean, I could see that existing. It would have to be a really minuscule heal or it would probably be seriously problematic. Or maybe, like, it does it automatically, but it only goes off so many... Like, it has a cooldown effectively. But, like, it doesn't chew up an action to activate. Not a bad retaliation here. Not a bad retaliation. Of course, if bad guy tries to stick the smother mother onto the spa, then you have two hits, one hit, one hit. And possibly the pterodactyl even collapsing down. Bad guy really hasn't gotten a ton of value out of this werewolf other than the early game. 2989. Smother Mother just getting the hell out of Dodge. It was weird because of the... Uh, ooh, Muffin. It was weird because of the way the uh, the animation worked with it teleporting underground, but the poison marker following it. Like, I think there is room in Phobies for more passive abilities, things that are just happening. Um, you do have to be careful because, like, while it's, it's kind of cool at the same time, there's no player decision obviously hence passive like it's just happening yeah you set up for example that aoe heal 
you'd have to position around it, but like it, it essentially gives you a free action, and that's potentially very scary. Werewolf with like the Zangief esque attack animation. But not quite enough damage to kill the stabby Lul. Our hero at a big advantage here. Maybe not big advantage, but at a slight advantage here if they can kill this werewolf. Not even bothering to go after the werewolf. Picking off the cowbell. I think there's a world where you could have sniped the Bachelor and not lost anything. Possibly not. Yoink into daisy range. Hmm. This is yet another very scrappy game. I don't know that the... Well, I guess the opener was... I don't want to say dumb. But I definitely don't like the turrets, like double turret on this map. I can understand one, but my biggest issue on this map with one movers is you just very easily get clogged. It's way too easy to just really hose your own movement on this map. Since you obviously have uh, Crushmore, you definitely want that guy online as early as possible. Whether you're setting down blocks to lock them out or breaking blocks to open up your own movement, or just using it for a lob. It does everything you want. Like, there's basically no reason to avoid it on this map. I think the turrets definitely put you in a hole. Um, but overall, like, incremental advantage throughout the game. That's why I was saying it was kind of scrappy. But GG, well played. Smother Mother was chilling for a good minute. Yeah, Smother Mother didn't want any part of this. Didn't want any part of that. All right, we got an Urk game. I didn't see how many turns this was, so we're going to learn together. Probably chat caught it, but I didn't. This could have went on for even longer if I refused to sacrifice my cat. What? Guess we're, we are going to find out. I accidentally went into this game and didn't really care about it and wanted to use my new stabby. That's fair. That's fair. Uh, I think you could have pulled it off with just, like, one of the turrets, though. You didn't need both in that game. I'm getting tired, Jet. I hope I can sleep tonight. I don't tire of this insomnia nonsense and then getting up really early because... My body's waking me up on the weekends for my work schedule. This is a long game. Mm, not good for me. <laughs> 51 turn game. It is, in fact, a long game. Game would have been longer if I didn't sacrifice my cat. As the notes do indicate, I'm curious what this play is where the cat gets sacrificed to uh, prevent the game from going longer. Definitely been liking the double turret on small maps and not large maps. Yeah. I'm not a fan. I mean, the thing is, Stabby, I'm okay with on larger maps. I'm curious how Giggles is going to be on larger maps. Um, I just feel like Stabby is way better than Bow Mangles. The utility of not just the reflect damage, although that's significant, but also the dimensional pull on a body that isn't trivial to eliminate. So, like... You can off Bachelor, and we were talking about this earlier in the night. You can kill Bachelor 
pretty trivially. And as a result, it's rare that it ever causes any harm positionally. However, Stabby requires significant effort to take down. Like, you can't just, oops, I killed your Stabby, generally. And if that's true, you have to commit enough that you can't necessarily avoid the dimensional pull or get the damage where you want it to go. Or even if you do, Stabby still represents a decent amount of damage um, on the, because of the dimensional piece on top of the uh, reflect damage. So on a larger map, I'm fine with putting Stabby out there because you can get other advantages from the usage. It's all shits and giggles and some, until someone giggles and shits. Thanks, Dad. <laughs> I also have giggles and I love him. He just does so much damage. Yeah, there's an enormous amount of damage. We haven't seen giggles too much in games, so we'll see. But anyway, in the meantime, we're getting a tractor versus repeller. And a rock lobster. A little clobster action. Clobster I kind of get. I don't really... Well... I guess the repeller's fine. You know, if you could boop, say, the crush more from this position into the disease tiles. Somebody was bringing up other boopers. <sighs> other pushes. But the thing is, is that this is only 185 disease. Yes, it's a permanent amount of damage. Yes, it adds up. Yes, it is annoying to address if you don't have some way to, like, heal it off. As in, like... A blue lion to have it just stand on the spa so it doesn't die. Um, but I don't feel as though it's enough to justify some of these things. Like a repeller is okay. It's mechanical so it can go on its own disease tiles without having to worry about the incremental damage or the incidental damage. Uh, it's a relatively cheap investment and it's a three ranger. Whereas if you go, say, Rambolina, more significant investment Less generally useful because it's melee, even though it has three movement. And while it can get an AoE boop, it's probably only going to get one thing onto the disease tile, and then it probably dies. Repeller at least can poke at things and do other stuff, so I like the Repeller more so than Rambo in this slot. But in the meantime, Urk dropping a mother load of their own. Saw DT do that to somebody earlier. Don't do it to him, DT. Because it's jammer time. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Well, not for long, seven phobies. 14 keys for bad guy, eight for our hero here. So are we going to get a crush more lockout here? Because that would be very interesting. The attractor has to play it very safe because the threat of a, just a random poke from repeller plus the clopster possibly means a dead attractor. And then, of course, potential splash from Klepto. I don't know about this Baba Yaga. Honestly, I guess I don't hate it. This is a stalemate situation. A trapper, especially an AoE trap like this, could get a lot of value. But I can absolutely see why this game started to drag out at this point. I'm curious how the replay system figures out where to cut out dead space. Like, how many seconds of inactivity? Or does it just cut out everything between actual actions? That's probably how it figures it out, right? I ended up using Rockus, but it wasn't very useful against pushers. I don't think Rockus or Boomer are very useful for those setups anyway. Most of the time, because... The, the displacing player has first act, right? Like, they have the advantage here because they could go north, south, east, west, wherever they want to, to change the angle of the displacement, thereby getting around either stasis or sedimentary, right? 
maybe if we had three to four more phobies with those abilities, I think it could work. Boop. Like, yeah, you probably needed the raucous in front here, which also wouldn't have done anything, so I guess it doesn't matter. Raucous is very useful against pullers on tight maps when obstacles can assist. That's such a narrow application that it feels like you can probably find a way to do it without having to resort to raucous. Like, a terraform would be more valuable, generally. Across, like, a number of other scenarios, and can also do the same thing. It's a quick pick here into the grouped death ball. The bad guy's gonna make you hurt for it. At least a little bit. I was about to say, are you not going to kill this thing? Alright, the body block from Clobster probably preserves the snowball's life. But there are other bad things about to happen to bad guy. Okay, so do we get the mother load activation or do we get Rockus AoE? We get Rockus. That's a lot of keys traded out. I mean, you possibly lose the Rushmore in the north. Clinico is the penultimate phobie. Still nine keys available for bad guy, though. We have crossed the halfway mark for the game, chat. Evo 3.0. That's all a bad guy's keys and also a big, scary phobie. I'm actually getting very tired, chat. Like, I suddenly hit a wall, like, ten minutes ago. What's wild to me is that no point did bad guy ever show any interest in claiming this back. They could have capped that bottom point and then completely pulled Urk in two directions. And then maybe created an opening. But instead, they just never showed any interest in that. And instead, this whole fight is taking place in one spot. Excuse me. And it kind of feels like that happens a lot, where players are st sometimes stubborn about their positioning, their strategies, their whatever. It's like, hey, you could have just sent one guy to the other side of the map here. It would have to be like, you would have needed a terraform and then something else, or just walk the terraformer in, risk it dying, whatever. But, like, if you opened up that avenue, even earlier in the game, like, say they did it on turn one, if they went Gravedigger Snowball and broke that block, the threat would have been there throughout the entire game that bad guy could just send something there. I'm not saying have one key trading wars on the southern panic point of this map, but at least, at the very least, you have the threat of I could send something there, make it a four to two panic point advantage, and then you have to do something, Erk. But they didn't, so now Urk has, like, an eternity to eventually set them up for an attractor break. His Clinico got a lot of value. I mean, if you're just going to stare at each other for several turns, yeah, cooldowns will do that. Here's the thing, like, how many traps has this Baba Yaga put on the board? It had to be a lot by this point, right? All right, so here's presumably the cat sacrifice. But yeah, bad guy's out of keys, so now something fairly decent has to go in. And it looks like bad guy's actually willing to try and reposition here. Maybe send the snowball to that bottom panic point. And in fact it is. Hey, thank you for the follow. Much appreciated. All right, so that's an interesting break. Trap. 
traps, traps galore. Big Hevo Splash, but with no trap follow-up and not a lot of damage to speak of, that attractor's going to eat. Or should. You got a bunch of things that are going to be in range, and you have multiple AoE effects here. Yoink. Rock is double hit is not something that happens every day. Focusing down the Clopster. Well, you get a double kill here. But Hevo and Snowball are still alive. It's, it looks like it's going to come down to Ginsting and Motherload versus Hevo and Snowball, which, uh, at least on its surface, I'm not super excited to be in the, the uh, Motherload Ginsting team. So why not do that in the other order? So if you hit it first with the mother load, unless that would have killed it. If you hit it first with the mother load, the Jinsting ends up on the panic point and you still have them separated. Jinsting dies? How much does this guy do? Does he? I'll take your word on it. I'll take your word on it. It feels like he should have enough health to live through that. Because you're not going to get, like, double fire tiles off of it, obviously. Hevo is trapped, but that's a lot of orange panic points. But also, not quite enough health. Probably Mother, Mother Load is tankier anyway. It has more HP to spare. I mean, that's all. That is true. Minus four health. <laughs> GG. Well played, Eric. Yeah, there. That definitely could have gotten drawn out. The the Bobby Yaga was weird, but I think it actually, given the state of the game, makes a lot of sense. Um, I don't know if you dodged all the traps there or. Bad guy just didn't put out as many as they could have. But that could have gone wildly differently. But GG. All right, last game. Quan Davius, the Pyro Abyss. Lost my Doom Doom, so I had to use the next best thing. First of all, first of all, <laughs> why is there a Doom Doom? Second of all, there are a lot of things better than Doom Doom. I mean, next best. I don't know. Very thin, wet toilet paper. I I, I don't know. <laughs> like Doom Doom is scared of traps. Sure. <laughs> That's a dead cat. That is, in fact, a dead cat. But Jar and Murderwing avenge the loss. So still even panic points. Correction, Doom Doom died, so I had to stop trolling. <laughs> fair. That might be a fair assessment. All right, Baba Yaga. So we have seen Fire Ant put in work here. Boss obviously put in work here. But Baba Yaga is also another AoE phobie. Potential AoE phobie with these traps. So there is the Doom Doom. We're looking at level 10, level 9. Like this is, and we've had these games before. I forget, This is going back a while. But we absolutely had a game where... I think Miss Cha was the bad guy at the time, and I forget who the hero was, but Miss Cha had like three or four trappers on the board. 
or the excuse me, the other way around. Our hero had three or four trappers on the board, and Doom Doom did like nothing. It made no impact whatsoever. Here's part of the reason why Doom Doom is irrelevant. Okay, so you know that trap is there, right? First of all, that trap positioning, less than ideal. But you know that trap is there now. And you put the cowbell there anyway. Why? Because it's going to tank the trap and who cares? And that's kind of what you need to do. You just test with one keys. I mean, tickles exist, so like... Even if you you don't want your one key to just outright die to trap plus one attack or outright die to the trap, just test it. Like I don't think Doom Doom is doing enough for you nine times out of ten. We'll see how much he does here. Now, bad guy investing in a spider, which is potentially very scary, of course, the traps... You have an inoculus, and you have other mobile threats that you can snipe something. That's something being Owl Boy. Down goes Doom Doom, I have to assume. There's no way this thing lives, right? There's no way Bad Guy invests that much to, to let the Doom Doom live. And honestly, our hero here does not have, like... Well, they might have some decent retaliation. The question really becomes, can you kill the spider? Doom doomed. Got him. <laughs> Boom. Roasted. This has to be a dead spider, right? Like, double jar hit. You get the meatball. You get the, uh... Okay. No, oh, fireball there. The challenge play pull into the crush more hit. This is a, this is decent. I like this. Doom Doom for spider and. Wait, are you really going to puke there? Okay, good. This, I think, is a more reasonable response. Because it's just like, all right, I'm going to turn off all these tiles right here. All of them. You got a trap there? Don't care. They're They're all gone. Maybe not permanently, but still. Takedowns going a little bit back and forth. Another month. It's like the night of Motherload. We haven't seen Motherload in what feels like months. And we have three of them tonight. Down goes Frazier. See? I use Motherload pretty frequently. I don't... I legitimately don't remember the last time we saw a Motherload prior to this. Maybe it was, like, yesterday. And I forgot. <laughs> Mainly because I don't have many great 7 keys. I mean, that's fair. So Motherload, not interested in being aggressive. I can't really blame him. 2 keys, thanks to an erratic 7 keys left for our hero. Blinky's somewhat of an odd addition, but I mean, it's fine. See? Tickles already did 10 times as much as Doom Doom. That Oculus was level 3? Level 4, but very close. Still is a threat, of course. Three Rangers are still a threat. Gesundheit, the final OB. I need to go back to being a Graylian main. I've been lacking. <laughs> Make it happen. I haven't seen this block broken in a very long time. I think we saw it a few months ago with a heart push on this map. Like This would have been in the spring, I think. But this is a defensive break because you know there's no trap here. It's actually not bad. I like the positioning. Panic point flips back in favor of bad guy. Not long, though. Not for long. Sheeping gas. And 
I get it. Bad guy really stuck between a rock and a hard place here. I don't really know. They they can't advance. They do have a panic point advantage, but our hero still has keys. One, two, three, five. They are maxed out, though. That's the only drawback. Being maxed out like this means you can't just send a one key in. Um, possibly could have been a little more patient to do that. Let the one key die. Like, let them cap with Bachelor. You kill it. Send a one key out. Cap it back. And now you have every advantage. They have to commit into you. You have the because you have the panic point advantage. You already have your concave set up. It could even have all the phobies that we see right now. Just you would have a panic point advantage too. I think bad guy must have given up at this stage. Like I don't understand why they would not reposition prior to this. This is pretty aggressive though from our hero because there's no way you kill this mother load, right? So the mother load's going to get a pretty significant hit off off of the stem, but you do get the sheep connection onto Erratic and Baba Yaga. Yeah, I figured there was a, a trap where the sheep was, but Erratic evaporated. Baba Yaga will get to heal, but really the entire team is on the back of mother load. Mother load says, I'm getting the hell out of dodge. This is probably going to be a 4 to 1 panic point advantage because of Honey Bear. Yep. Chat, I've been getting presented a lot of YouTube videos about tardigrades. There's really no segue from that. It's just interesting. I've been getting a lot of science videos about tardigrades, which is just kind of funny to me. <laughs> the jackalopes. Honestly, like it's not bad here. I don't know what the hell bad guy can do, to be honest. There's really not much they can do about it. I was very scared in the middle. I think a healthy respect for the trap potential is appropriate in this scenario. <laughs> I think a healthy respect is warranted. 11.25 a turn. Your heart not lasting very long. I think you possibly could have just killed them. Oh, no, they still have 4K health? How do they have so much heart health left? Bad guy can lose. That's what they can do? True. <laughs> Turning off your own panic point for the lulls? I know it's not for the lulls, but... And the muffin. What better way to finish the game? A meager, a lazy 900 damage a turn from Panic Points. Yeah, that Doom Doom was completely irrelevant. Uh, I guess you could argue that, oh, well, it forced Bad Guy to come after it. Because the, the subsequent two turns, I think, really is what solidified the victory, but, like, the Doom Doom was completely unnecessary. You could have tested for most of those traps with one keys and or just popped out a honey bear sooner and the honey bear would have been way more valuable. That's obviously shown, but either way, GG. All right, chat. That's going to do it for tonight. I'm wiped out. I really need to go to bed. I got to get some sleep. Definitely a lot of fun looking at these games. There were definitely some cool ones in the docket. There are still a number for next week, but you know what we also have for next week? Right night number 11. Of course, we'll have Monster of the Week 3 as well. Uh, I'm going to try and see how we're going to do this because I have some real life stuff that I got to take care of. It is entirely possible that the games from Fright Night and Monster of the Week will not be streamed, in which case maybe we'll spend the following weekend breaking down all those games. We'll see. I'm not really sure how we're going to play that one just yet. But for now, like I said, that's going to do it. So as always, everybody, thank you for listening. Thank you for watching. Tune in next time for more Random Slots.